What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Ryzen 7 8840U powered single board computer. Well, the company does call these single board computers that are listed over on their website as SBCs, but we do need to add our own RAM and storage. And we've taken a look at a few of these in the past with lower end APUs and Intel CPUs. These are some of my favorite little devices to mess around with, building, you know, small form factor gaming machines with external GPUs and things like that. But now that we've got Ryzen 8000 in these boards, I mean, by itself, this is actually a really nice little gaming machine. And obviously, it's very small form factor. And just to give you an idea, I've got a Raspberry Pi 5 here, and it is coming in a bit larger than the Pi 5. It's actually 4x4 four four inches, and this one here is known as the 8840U 4x4. Four four. These do come bare bones, and I haven't really seen any company offering these with RAM and storage, so we will have to add our own here. I'm going to be going with 32 gigabytes running in dual channel. This is just some 5600 megahertz crucial RAM. And as for storage, we've actually got two M.2 slots here, one 2280 and one 2242. Both of these slots do support Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSDs. I've got a two terabyte Aorus that's going to be going in the 2280 slot, but I think we're going to save that 2240 slot for an Oculink adapter. It would be really cool to be able to easily add an external GPU to this thing. And when it comes to I.O., up front here, we've actually got two USB 4 ports. Both of these run at a 40 gig protocol. We've also got a full size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Around back, we've got dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two full size HDMI ports and two USB 2.0 ports along with our power input. And if we take a closer look at the board, we can actually add a 2.5 inch drive to this with an adapter that's included. And there's two USB 2.0 pinouts on the board, so you can add extra USB to this thing. Like I mentioned, I do want to add an Oculink adapter to this board, and it's pretty easy to do so. And I also understand that we've got USB 4, so using a Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 eGPU would be possible. But Oculink is much faster, and all we need is one of these little M.2 to Oculink adapters. Now I know that this is a 2242 slot and you can buy one of those adapters, but the last one that I have left here is a 2280. I think we can make it stay here with a little modification, but that way we've now got a 63 gig port here to connect an eGPU. Another thing I wanted to do was kind of get this up off of the table and we could set this vertically or we could set it horizontally. I've got a little case here with a bunch of little standoffs. I've got some brass ones. I've got some plastic ones. These are just leftovers from other projects. I think I can come up with something to build a little bit of a stand for this unit. And it's pretty simple to do. I've just got a couple of plastic standoffs on the bottom. Again, you can set this horizontally if you want to, but I kind of like having them set up vertically. I've also installed that Oculink adapter. So uh, by the end of this video, we can connect a pretty powerful GPU to this little board. I'm gonna be running Windows 11 Pro. And with this 27 inch monitor that I have here, it actually supports USB type C video in. So we're just gonna be going from one of the USB four ports up front. Now I was really hoping that we could power this unit over USB four, but unfortunately with everything that I've tested so far, I just can't get it to be power. I just can't, I just can't get it to power up over USB, but this does have a pretty wide voltage range. So using a barrel jack, you can go anywhere from 12 volts up to 20 with it. And there we go. So now I just need to get some drivers installed and we'll get into a little bit of testing. So like I mentioned, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. We've added 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, eight cores, 16 threads based on Zen 4. And as for the iGPU, it's a 780M, so it's based on RDNA 3. I've been doing a little bit of testing so far and I think I'm in balanced mode from the BIOS. We're only boosting up to around 35 watts. So going into the BIOS on these units, we can actually enable performance mode from advanced CPU configuration all the way down. There's a quiet, balanced and performance mode. This is gonna change the TDP across the board. And in performance mode, we should theoretically have around a 50 watt TDP, at least a boost up to 50. We can test this by running something like CPU-Z, checking out the TDP here with hardware info. So as soon as I stress this out, give it a second to kind of get on up there. And yeah, it looks like we've got a boost up to 50, but across the board, we've got a steady 42 watts out of this unit. And that's just on the CPU. I think 45 watts in performance mode is about where we are when we're stressing out that CPU and GPU at the same time, which is gonna offer some great performance out of this 8840U. And if you're familiar with these chips, you know they put down some really good power. So using this as an everyday desktop PC would work out just fine. 
You want to do some video editing on this, you definitely could with that iGPU. Photo editing, 4K video playback here on YouTube, 4K, 60, HDR. And I just went ahead and reset that frame counter in Stats for Nerds. Go ahead and let this run for a second. And I mean, we should get some really good 4K video playback. And this is streaming from YouTube, but if you wanted to use another app or a different browser, or even running 4K video from internal or external storage, the 8840U has more than enough power for it. One thing I'd love to do with this board is install Linux and see exactly what kind of performance we can get out of it like it is, but since we've got Windows 11 Pro here, I figured I'd run some benchmarks. We'd also test out some gaming on the iGPU. And of course, since we added an Oculink adapter, we will need to connect an external GPU to this thing. I just ran a couple basics with 3D Mark. We've got Night Raid coming in with a 28,295. And I also ran Time Spy, which is looking really good here with a 3,094. We could use a third-party app, something like x86 Tuning Utility, but I think, uh, you know, with the cooler size and everything, 50 watts is going to be plenty for this little setup. So the next thing I wanted to show off was some gaming on the iGPU. Here's Spider-Man Remastered, 1080p, low settings with FSR set to performance. This game is running much better than I thought it would, and you know, we've had a lot of updates to the game and driver optimizations with this 780M, so we're actually seeing some amazing performance with this game, and when it initially launched, we were hard pressed to run this over 60 at 720p, so seeing an average of around 71 with these settings is really great. I'm going to plug this into my game capture real quick so we can get a better look at everything. I'll test two more games, and then we're going to move over to an external GPU. Here's Fortnite 1080p with a low medium mix, 80% resolution scale, and you know, going down to 900p would probably be the way to go, but once we kind of move really quickly turning that camera, you will see it dip down every once in a while. Now it's not horrible, and I'm not sure if it's shaders loading in the background, but by the end of this, I got an average of 88 FPS out of Fortnite on this system. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1080p low with FSR set to performance. And in the past, I've seen better performance out of the 780M. I think it's just because we're right there at that steady 42 watts. Taking this up a bit would allow us to get the higher clocks on the CPU and GPU, but then we'll really be stressing out the cooler. It's definitely a smaller blower style cooler here. And you know, at 42 watts, we're still not seeing horrible performance. Average of 65 FPS. But there are easy ways to get a lot more GPU performance out of this little board here. We do have USB 4, but we added that Oculink port and this will run it up to 63 gigs instead of 40 like USB 4 will. And I'm going to be adding the GPD G1 eGPU dock. With this, we get a Radeon RX 7600 MXT with 8 gigs of VRAM. Recently on the channel, I actually showed you how to build a cheap Oculink eGPU dock. You can basically add whatever GPU you want. But these are kind of all-in-one docks, and uh, I personally really like this one here. It does up to 120 watts, and all we really need to do here is plug our Oculink into the dock itself, and that adapter we added to this board. Unfortunately, Oculink isn't hot swappable, so we do need to make sure everything's shut down. Then we'll turn the eGPU on first, then we can boot the board up. After a little while, we should boot into Windows, and I'll need to install the correct driver here. But now, instead of using that 780M iGPU, we've got the Radeon RX 7600 MXT. And with the correct dock, you can add basically any GPU you want here. We're now at 1080p high with no FSR, and we're seeing averages over 100. And if you remember, on the iGPU, we were at 1080 low with FSR set to performance. So this is a real nice boost. I also went back to Fortnite with that Oculink eGPU, and now instead of running this at like 80% resolution scale, low medium, we're at ultra 100% res 1080p. I've got it capped at 144 FPS. We're not quite steady there, but it's much more than that iGPU, as you can see. And if we went down to high settings at 1080, it's still going to look great. We could lock it at 144 Hz. And finally, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080, Ultra, no FSR, we're seeing an average of 111 FPS. Now, personally, I think that the 7600 MXT can do 1440 high settings with some scaling going on, but it's really considered a 1080p card. And over Oculink, that's what we're doing here. 
getting some really awesome performance. These boards are definitely not for everybody. You'd probably be better off just buying a mini PC, but if you need something that's a bit smaller than one of those mini PCs for projects, then this could really work out. If you're interested in seeing Linux running on this, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to install something like Manjaro, or I could go with a totally different distro. Just let me know what you want to see running. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you want to learn a little more about this board, I'll leave some links down below. I believe you can pick this up on eBay, and Newegg sometimes stocks the industrial version, which we have here of the 4x4s. If I can find those, I'll leave them down in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.